When it comes to crafting, I actually have a massive shelf of shame. Uh, basically a pile of unfinished crafts. So we're going to take this pile of junk and we're going to turn it into something useful for our tabletop role playing. All that and more today on Writing and Role Playing. Hello everyone, my name is J.S. Matthews, and welcome back to Writing and Roleplaying, a series where we take a look at how to be a better writer, roleplayer, and DM. And today we're going to work on a couple of crafts that I've had sitting around for a while. I had kind of started a couple different things, and finally realized I should probably finish them up and get them off my shelf. So we got some columns we're going to be working on, we got kind of a half-built bridge, and we got some barbed wire and sandbags, and then the things you're seeing now, I kind of thought of these as... Maybe like something that's going to hold like propane or something like that for my tabletop uh, zombie RPG and, and a couple things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each of these little crafts here and just try to get them finished up and finally get them off my shelf. And I'm going to show you a couple little techniques that I've been using. We're going to make some more corpses. I believe I've made some uh, orc corpses in the past. Today we're going to make some human corpses as well. I got to gotta have some human corpses as well. Um, these that you're seeing here, this granny grating I pre-cut up, I was going to make some chain link fences, but I think I'm going to save that for another video. I figure I wouldn't put it in this one, because this one's going to be long enough with a couple different things we're doing. So, um, to start off here, I think we're going to actually work with the columns. So, I actually cut a couple of little, uh, kind of foam pieces out there, and we're going to try to remake some of those columns that I already made. I tried to make some different ones. Honestly, I didn't like these ones as much. Uh, what I did was I took some F, uh, XPS foam and just cut it into some squares, threw some glue on, and then grabbed a uh, couple of toothpicks and just stabbed them through the top and just added those little foam pieces I cut just to kind of add a couple different levels of relief to this. I'm also going to end up adding a couple pieces of cardboard around the outside to kind of do some sort of a dwarven design it doesn't work out as well as i thought it would but honestly they definitely don't look bad i still like the the second design uh, a little more that i'm going to show you but we're going to go ahead and just shove those pieces i've already pre-cut down on there i had cut those a while ago all i did was take my hot foam cutter cut out a couple uh you know just sort of rectangular pieces and then cut the edges off each of them and this is kind of what it looks like on the bottom there still a little wet had to wait for it to dry before I start twisting it and then also did the top and bottom and that's how our first set of columns is gonna look the second one I'm gonna try to duplicate is those ones I already kind of half finished and I just cut out a couple pieces of this foam I had and then did the, sort of the same thing threw some glue on it I cut a couple more pieces of that foam core out but this time I kind of cut the little corners off each of them and I don't know, I thought that added a little bit to it. I think these might actually be my favorite columns. They're a little shorter than the other ones. I wanted some different type of columns to kind of work with. And I think these actually turned out pretty well. Now we're going to do the top as well. Same thing. Uh, I think I actually skipped out on the uh, foam core that time on the top. I just figured I, it would, you know, it worked just fine. You can't really see it anyways. <laughs> I got a little lazy there, but that's okay. Sometimes with crafting, you just got to kind of do what you want to do. Uh, here's the cardstock I was talking about. Just kind of cut it into some, you know, little shapes that match up at the bottom there. I probably should have been a little more careful with the cutting. They don't match up perfectly. Uh, if I ever try this again, I'll probably take my time with it a little more, and I'll probably make those XPS pieces just a little bit wider, but I kind of thought this would be fun, add a little add a little sort of dwarven relief and decoration to each of those, and just kind of set them apart. All right, now next up, I had a bunch of these extra bases I made. These are just foam core that I've covered in grout and some glue so I threw some glue down and just kind of dripped the grout over the top of it and uh, then I painted up 
couple weapons and these were just some extra weapons I had and I just painted those up and then I did a glob of hot glue on there same as I did with the orcs uh, the, the the dead orcs in the previous episode only this time I kind of let it dry and I made sort of a little pile here now the, what I'm doing here is kind of making some other piles of glue I'll show you why we're gonna make some treasure piles and I just cover these uh, hot glue you know the dried hot glue um, in uh, in some more PVA glue and then I poured some gold and silver just you know um, glitter over the top I had to think about what that word was real quick <laughs> I tried to do some smaller piles and they look okay on the uh, video here but in in real life I thought they looked terrible I think I ended up throwing those away but the ones on the bases actually looks pretty cool here I am putting together a sort of a corpse pile I had a bunch of these extra little zombie you know pieces I, I forgot what these were these little zombie miniatures and so what I did was I just made a big pile of them and just kind of kept adding some hot glue and made a big corpse pile as you can see I even threw on some little heads from extra extra miniatures I had I have a couple where we got some arrows sticking out of him we got a spear sticking out of one and basically if if you want to see some more detail on this I would go to my orc corpse it's the very first video I ever made and this is the same thing instead of using black uh, blood for the orcs I used some red and just kind of added everything together but we got some good human corpses now too that we can throw around on the battlefield and you know when uh when my characters walk into a village that's been raided by beast men we now have a you know a couple corpses to add to it and there's the treasure I added those uh you know weapons to it but here we are on to the columns again and we're gonna add a nice thick layer of black mod or black paint and mod podge and that's just gonna give it a really nice thick layer of protection and yeah it worked out pretty well kind of pulls everything together and we got those covered now and now we're gonna start some painting uh, I took some of this uh, I think that's mushroom color and I just threw that over these pre-made sort of sandbag things right here that you can see now these are actually just from you know the old-school army men toys I just had a couple of these lying around and I thought you know what why not let's let's throw these together see if we can actually turn them into some terrain and honestly I think they turn out really good you have to let me know at the end of the video what you think speaking of which if you're still watching leave a like maybe even subscribe and let me know in the video comments what you're thinking about these crafts I'm doing here we are painting those sort of uh, I guess I looked at them as like propane tanks um, I thought they'd be kind of fun little uh, I don't know maybe a little addition to my zombie side tabletop role-playing games and stuff if we can you know need need something to blow up maybe they they can blow them up as a distraction or just you know for scattered terrain so I just threw a little gray on there and some green and then I'm gonna touch it up coming up here with a, a few other colors and give it some rust effects and all sorts of stuff but we're gonna move on to those uh, columns as well just paint them with a pewter gray and just paint the whole thing up and I just kind of hit all of them with a nice layer of pewter gray and that'll give us a good base color over that black and as you can see here they look pretty good already I have a couple other little touch-ups I'm gonna add to them but overall they look pretty good I do a little dry brushing coming up here with some mushroom color uh, I like a mushroom brown I really like it I think it adds um, a little bit of texture a little bit of highlight to it and I really think it looks good there's the finished product for all of them uh, the more dwarven columns I tried to do more of like a light gray and a white uh, kind of give them a little bit of different texture different color you can see it in the video as well but uh, you know I'm not sure if I like those ones so much it's okay and now here we are with our those are what the uh, barbed wire again that is from actually some old army men sets that I had and I just cut the barbed wire in half and put half of it on each of those two pieces of barbed wire made up four uh, you know four sets of barbed wire here that you know they were a little too tall um, and here I am just kind of brushing them with a little bit of I think that's like iron warriors or something like that and uh, yeah they look pretty good next I take some agrec earth shade and I'm gonna throw it over the top of all of that uh, all those sandbags and that really brings out even though there's not much detail it still does bring it out and I think it adds a lot to it really kind of gets into those recesses and uh, ends up looking pretty good again I kind of slather that stuff on there these are these are sandbags they're supposed to be dirty and now we're heading back to these little propane takes I took some brown paint I really didn't like the way they looked, so I started adding some rust effects and I looked up a couple videos on how to do this some chipping and I don't do it too over the top but I do kind of like this little stippling effect on the edges and in certain areas 
and I tried to make these look real weathered, and I think they turned out really good. You guys will have to let me know again what you think about this, but I, I think it turned out really good. I like it. Now, this right here is kind of off topic. I got a shipment of miniatures in. Uh, I got these for, I think, $18 on eBay, but these are all the from the game Bloodborne, and they were just, somebody was putting them up there, and I ended up getting them for pretty cheap, nobody else bid on them, so I think I paid about 18 bucks, that was including shipping for all of these, so this will be a future video, maybe we'll paint these up, but we got some good looking, uh, good looking monsters and stuff for our, for our tabletop role playing games. Now I based these in the same way that I based uh, all the orc terrain, all I did was throw down some glue, and then throw the grout over the top and spray it with some water and as you can see I'm gonna dry brush these uh, sandbags now and I know they look a little light on the video it they definitely really toned it down in, in you know, you know kind of like real life you can see it's not as it's not as bright but once once kind of dries I think it looks pretty good and there's a lot of uh, a lot of mixing of tones and I thought it looked really good now here's the last craft we're gonna do, and this was the biggest one. Uh, I had this half-finished bridge for so long, and I had fiddled with it and cut it, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I finally decided, you know what, I'm gonna make this bridge, and I'm gonna make it look good. So first thing I did was I cut out sort of two pieces of, I kind of saw it as cliff sides, and because the, the, the bridge was just a little too short. Um, it wouldn't fit over my rivers that I made, and it wouldn't fit, to, fit over the big river terrain that I made, uh, and that, I think that's actually the next episode. I'll show you in this episode. First, first big resin pour, actually. But uh, I decided to, you know, just kind of put the bridge on those sort of elevated position, and then I started making some bricks out of the XPS foam, and then just slathered some hot glue on there, and shoved it down onto both pieces. And it worked out pretty well. It fits over the top of all the rivers I've made, and uh, I'll show that in some later clips. And then I glued down some corner pieces here just to kind of hold it in. And I just made some bricks, kind of fitted them uh, to where they should be, and carved some nice little details in them, and just kind of started gluing them along the side there. And just trying to cover up all of those horrible cuts and <laughs> the pieces of the bridge that I, I really did not want anyone to see because they look terrible. Here's kind of the finished base product. I still have to add some bricks over the top, but I think overall, this is where I was really getting excited. I, I thought this actually looked pretty good for a half done craft. Really like to cut up a bunch of little bricks here. I actually have a ton left over. We're gonna have to use those in a later project. But uh, yeah, pretty easy to cut those using my hot foam cutter. And now I just started hot gluing them uh, along the edges here. And uh, this was going to be our railing, basically. So I just kind of cut them out, glued them on. And uh, I think I used PVA glue about halfway through there. Um, I also wanted to kind of blend in the bridge part, the little bricks, to the rest of the, the build here. So I cut out some more foam core. And I just carved in some bricks there, just with a pen. And just kind of glued them in, just to add a little, little extra relief there. And same basing technique here. I just threw down some glue and some water and painted that across the whole area and just dumped a bunch of grout over it and pushed it in between those those areas and once it dried i just covered it in, in uh black paint and mod podge give it that nice layer of protection and of course it gives us a base layer to start painting on um, and uh, it always looks real nice when you get this black paint and mod podge on there man that, that's when your craft really starts coming together and all that hard work starts paying off um, and it just looks good and it's fun it just kind of ties everything together All right, now it's time to paint. I did that same pewter gray just across the stones, and I painted the uh, the ground just a, a brown. I think it's like a almost like a chocolatey brown, to be honest. And uh, this is again, you you start really seeing the craft come together. You see all those little details start to pop out, and uh, yeah, I picked out a couple of uh, different stones and painted them different colors there. Uh, I kind of added some brown, that mushroom in there, and a little bit of even red, I think, and, and made a little almost purple color. Gave it a nice little dry brush all over there, and then I grabbed a black wash. This is just black paint, water, and a little bit of dish soap, and I just slathered the whole thing in this. Um, the, uh, or at least all the ground. I did the, the bridge a different color, actually. I learned in uh, painting some miniatures that if I had a little bit of blue to it, 
it actually gives the stonework a, a nice kind of cool color. Um, and so I used a little bit of uh, just a blue paint into that same black wash and just covered the entire bridge in that. And you can see nice little details popping out. And here I am adding the flocking. All I do is throw down a bunch of paint and mush it around with my finger. And I kind of wanted to leave sort of like a little path in the middle, so I just didn't put any flocking there. But I mixed a couple colors together, and I think this is just like sawdust and paint. I, I bought this online, it was pretty cheap. And uh, just kind of sprinkle it around on there, and yeah, ends up ends up looking pretty good. I try to get some in the uh, on the bridge itself there, just try to get a little color up there. Almost like the bridge is pretty old and overgrown, we got some cracks in there. All I do is just tap it and get the rest off. And as you can see, I covered covered quite a bit there. And I also have some kind of tufts here, some grass tufts, and just kind of threw those into the corners and tried to cover up some of that some of that space on the bridge, especially where it's just kind of open area where I, I just wasn't able to get the the bricks tight enough. And it's looking really good so far. I had one last thing to add in. I had some grass tufts, and you can kind of see them there on the bridge. I added in these these little green tufts, and they looked really good. I, that actually really kind of finished it up. And this bridge, man, after sitting on my, my shelf for a while, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. And I love the way it turned out. Here's some nice little glamour shots. Here we got our pillars. Uh, here's a couple miniatures that I just finished painting. In fact, the next episode, I'll be doing some, uh, or not the next episode, episode after this one, we'll be uh, painting some Lord of the Rings miniatures. Um, I love that Balrog. That one turned out so good. I really wish I would have done a video on that one, um, but it was, it was a tough paint job, and so I wasn't really sure how I was going to do with it, but it turned out really good. Here's our bridge. And here's a nice little preview of next week's episode. This is going to be, or uh, no, this is the previous week's episode. <laughs> I'm recording all of these at the same time, so it's all right. Um, but yeah, there's there was my first resin pour. It turned out really good. And uh, bridge fits right over the top of it. Here's our sandbags and our our barbed wire and our you know little propane tank type things. I'm really excited to use those in my game. I'm excited to use them as some sort of uh, maybe an objective my players have to blow up or something. Overall, though, I think these crafts turned out really, really well, um, and it was nice to kindly, finally empty that shelf out. I really love the the look of the the pillars, though, along with our other UDT. Everything really ties together, especially those corpses adds adds a lot to the environment there. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like, maybe even subscribe, and uh, I'm excited to share some more crafts with you. Uh, if you did enjoy this, if you ever want to support me or my channel feel free to uh, you know, subscribe, watch some more of my videos, or if you ever want to support me, uh, you can check out my books on Amazon. I always put links in the description, so feel free to check those out. They're pretty good. Uh, granted, I am a little biased towards my own work, but uh, if you like a good fantasy or post-apocalyptic adventure, I got a lot of different stuff for you. So, anyways, hope you all have a great day. God bless all of you, and uh, yeah, good luck with all your writing and role-playing.